Ah, Singapore, a place known for its exquisite beauty and culture, and visiting this place can be a wonderful experience. However, it is always a better idea to do some prior research before visiting this country. And that's exactly what we're gonna help you with if you're planning your next trip to Singapore. From essential recommendations to knowing about the place itself, we've got it all covered for you in this video. So without any further delay, let's get started. Singapore is unlike anywhere else. This dynamic city-state, located just off Malaysia's southern point, offers a delightful fusion of Malaysian, Indian, Chinese, Arab, and English cultures, all with a Singaporean touch. The Lion City, as it is affectionately referred to, is full with scrumptious culinary delights, cutting-edge accommodations, and an exhilarating nightlife. The place has a well-cultivated image of being a safe country. Some may find it excessively safe, citing its infamously rigorous rules and penalty for breaking them, as well as the sparking modern city sanitization. Others love the clean streets and groomed gardens nestled amongst the tall skyscrapers, as well as the fascinating mix of individuals who comprise Singapore's complex culture. With all this in mind, one would really want to give this place a visit. So here's what you need to know when traveling to this beautiful country. Though Singapore is a small country, it still has lots in it to explore, especially for people coming from other countries. Singapore is only about an hour's journey from one end to the other. Usually, three to four days is plenty for a first-time tourist to see the key sights and get a sense of the best things to do in Singapore. If you have a delay of at least five and a half hours, you can attend one of three complimentary transit tours provided by Singapore's outstanding Changi Airport. For a quick sample of what the country has to offer, Singapore, however, is more enjoyable than its reputation suggests. There are fantastic theme parks, world-class athletic events, and a well-known cocktail. Few places on the earth can compete in terms of high-end retail. Celebrity chefs and hoteliers are unavoidably drawn to Singapore's extraordinary riches, but nowhere else has a culinary reputation founded on both fine dining and some of Asia's best street cuisine. It's critical to grasp Singapore's diverse cultural heritage. There's much more to the city-state than British Empire antiquities and soaring modern buildings. Chinatown in Little India on the Singapore River's eastern bank feels separate from the rest of the city and from one another. The cuisine and architecture reflects their respective heritages, as do the hotels, which tend to be more cheap. Around Marina Bay, everything is unashamedly more extravagant. There are other high-end options, but Marina Bay Sands, which dominates the skyline, is without a doubt one of Asia's most remarkable hotels. It may appear as if a large ship has been neatly placed on top of three towers during a catastrophic flood, but this is Singapore's most famous property after raffles. For anyone visiting with shopping on their mind, it'll be more important to be close to Orchard Road. The Orchard District is home to several well-known worldwide hotel brands, including Four Seasons and Hilton. And what is there to say about the weather? If you talk about its weather, Singapore is practically on the equator, so expect hot tropical weather ranging from 77 to 95 degrees every day. In the event of searing rays or sudden downpours, a tiny umbrella is important. Singapore's high humidity, 60 to 90% on average throughout the year, might be challenging for people acclimated to temperate regions. So, be prepared to sweat it out, and it's always a good idea to bring light materials like a tiny fan or hanky with you. And for anyone sunbathing in the afternoon sun who isn't on the beach as a tourist, remember to apply sunscreen. But surprisingly, it is much colder indoors than outdoors, since shopping malls and central cooling compensate for the heat. A scarf or light jacket will keep you warm, provide additional sun protection, and serve as an excellent cover-up if you intend to visit sacred places. There's a joke that a Singaporean's favorite pastime is to queue for things, but that's not something you want to waste time on. If you could pre-purchase tickets or make a reservation online, just do it. This is especially important during busy weekends and peak vacation seasons, such as the mid- and year-end school holidays. The official website of the attraction is usually the best way to acquire tickets, but before you check it out, search alternative booking platforms, since these sites may offer seasonal discounts or bundle deals. You can also visit the Visit Singapore website on a regular basis. For example, there is now a Singapore Rewards Incentive Program that allows tourists to redeem a free experience of their choice. And while you're on your trip, it is better to carry both cash and credit cards with you. The amount of Singapore dollars you exchange before your trip is primarily determined on where you intend to go. 
Credit cards are accepted at most major tourist destinations and shopping malls. And alternative cashless options like contactless payments and smart wallets are also widespread. Those wishing to utilize public transportation in Singapore might swipe their credit cards on public buses and MRT card readers for convenience. But depending on how much travel you plan to undertake, acquiring a local EasyLink card or transport pass may be more worthwhile. But in either way, it is always advised to have some cash with you though, as it is still the most common mode of transportainment for most small shops, hawker center stalls, and taxis. If feasible, try to divide higher denomination bills, 50s and 100s, into smaller denominations. Along with that, tipping is not customary in Singapore. If you eat at a restaurant or cafe, the bill will normally contain a 10% service charge. Some establishments may include a tip jar, but additional tips are not required or expected, but they are appreciated in the service industry. Another interesting thing to know about this place is to understand the art of choping. If you are eating at food centers or working at co-working spaces, particularly within the central business district, you may notice empty tables with strategically placed items like umbrellas, tissue packets, or lanyards on the seats. This is a local practice to show or reserve a seat while everyone is queuing up at the stalls. Most people will respect this informal reservation system and hunt for available seats elsewhere. Also, when you're eating somewhere or just exploring the outsides, you really don't need to buy water bottles, as you can do so by drinking tap water. There's no need when the tap water in this area has been treated and is totally safe to drink. Most attractions include a water cooler where you can replenish your bottles. In restaurants, request tap water instead of still or sparkling water. While some establishments may charge you for a glass of tap water, it is still less expensive than ordering luxury bottled water off the menu. Singapore is an easy place when it comes to communication. Because English is widely spoken in Singapore, it is simple for Western tourists to get around on their own. Singapore has four official languages, Bahasa Melayu and Tamil represent the three major ethnic groups found here, which are Chinese, Malay, and Indian, respectively. And English is the main language used in schools and for business, allowing for cross-ethnic conversations, which might be a good thing for some people who are visiting the place for the first time, as they won't be facing any language barrier if they're good in English. Another interesting fact about this country is that you're unlikely to face any major natural disaster here, which can be considered a plus, especially when you're out. Singapore may lack magnificent mountain ranges and awe-inspiring geography, but it is also outside of any major tectonic upheaval. There are no big natural disasters here, such as earthquakes, volcanoes, typhoons, or sandstorms. Singapore is also well known for its typically stable political and corporate climate and it is frequently regarded as one of the world's least corrupt countries. Strikes that could disrupt travel arrangements are almost non-existent here. Singapore's crime rate is likewise quite low, thanks to extensive surveillance and a police department that the public trusts. But since low crime doesn't imply no crime, it is better to take some precautionary measures on your own when visiting places. And that's all for this video today. Let us know what are your thoughts on it in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching this video, then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.